What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video on the Brugly channel. Today, I will be going over five backrooms levels that are too dangerous to enter. And if you find yourself stuck in any of these levels, uh, you, you're probably not going to be breathing air for much longer. These are genuinely five bangers straight up. And if at any point you enjoy this video and you want more log form videos like this, leave a like for the old Brugly. I'd really appreciate it. And that way I can sit inside my dark room and watch the light count go up and get a single shot of dopamine each time it happens. Anyways, thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for your support. Grab some popcorn, grab a Dr. Pepper, turn the lights down low, and let's get into the video, shall we? Level 18.1 is a backwards, scary, and unnerving level. The first sentence of the page describes it as the antithesis to all that is beloved and treasured. So that is a crazy way to start off a level, so let's just see what goes on after. 18.1 takes the appearance of one of your fond memories, but then it goes and corrupts that memory and turns its appearance into an abomination. A nightmare, if you will. I'll explain fully how that happens throughout this video, but let's just start from the beginning. When you get sent to level 18.1, you'll be entered into a beautiful and surreal environment made up of your most fond memories. At first, the level could take place in your house, in your old school, in an old playground, in the woods that you used to play in as a child. Everything in this level looks like a dreamscape. There's these vibrant colors and these bright, blurry light bursts. This entire level feels like it's a hallucinogen, like you're going crazy or you're tripping on something. Essentially, it kind of feels like those dream core pictures, but with a fully explorable environment. The sky above these scenes that you'll get sent back to is always blue and always has big, white, puffy clouds. It's all very staticky and dreamlike. And each of the locations that are in this level are combined together in decently unnatural ways. Like, if you have memories of a bowling alley and a school and a playground, all three, they'll be merged together. Like, you could walk out of the bowling alley and then walk out the front door of your school and be at the playground. That's how this level is formed. Walking through these memories will be very similar at first to the normal level 18. In fact, you probably won't even realize that you're in a sublevel. You won't think anything's wrong until a shift happens in front of you. You see, you'll be walking around these liminal and dreamy places with these vibrancies and these lifelike features, and then you'll see the surroundings in this level start to grow dark and lose all the color and vibrancy they just had. The sun and the blue sky will turn into a moon and a dark sky, and this awful, horrible feeling of dread will creep up on you into a sense of paranoia. The environments you're exploring will get less and less light, and the light bulbs and the sun and all that light will just go away, and you'll almost be completely blind in the level. You'll feel like something is sniffing around you, something is touching you, something is everywhere, but you can't see it. All these scenes that you just explored will have nothing in it that you recognize. It'll all be dark and dangerous places. They'll still look vaguely familiar, but you know deep down that it's not your memory. These places will then begin to show you your past trauma. All of it will be realized right before your eyes. And once more and more of these nightmares start to creep in and creep in slower and slower, your mental state, your physical state will begin to crumble right before you. So what are these nightmares? What do they entail? What are they? All that stuff. The nightmares usually manifest themselves in several different ways. One is that they could manifest themselves in your biggest phobias or fears that will be realized right in front of you in your memories. So if you hate spiders or something, you might manifest big spiders crawling all over your childhood memories around you. If you hate shadows, then you'll see shadow entities dashing around the windows and in the rooms you're in while you're walking around your house or your school or whatever nostalgic memory you're inside of. It's really personalized horror. It's similar to level 666, but it's actually worse because this horror takes place inside of what was supposed to be a nostalgic dream, a very calming place, but now it's overrun with these awful things. Once the darkness comes and the level begins to be more and more corrupted, you'll start to feel hopeless and insignificant and alone. You'll just stop seeing any way out of it and you'll feel like you're sinking deeper and deeper into these nightmares that you won't be able to escape. This is all a part of the level's plan though, to try to trap you in and physically consume you. 
So make sure you do everything you can to ignore these feelings of paranoia, ignore the sadness, ignore the being scared, even though it'll be hard because your fears will be right in front of you. Just stay as calm as you physically can. The level has been described by survivors of it as a malevolent force, as if something is controlling it or something is literally making it as bad as it can be just to harm you. The entire level just drains your psyche and your sanity and all of that will deteriorate the longer you're inside of it and overall your mental state will just collapse. The level also might cause you horror and pain in other ways as well. You see, the document mentions on rare occasions that instead of you currently going through the nightmare, you might be forced to actually witness something else. For example, you might be forced to watch as your past self is being tormented. Maybe from a traumatic experience or something, you'll be forced to watch it without being able to move. You'll be unable to get closer or talk to your past self in any way. You're kind of just stuck at a distance watching your younger self be dismantled, whether it's you know physically, uh, emotionally, or psychologically. You'll be unable to do anything about it. And of course, this will cause your current self to feel even more guilty, more powerless, and more sad. This could be a part of the level's personalized horror, or it could be real, we're not really sure. But it's very rare that this might happen to you, but if it does, you might never leave. Now, I know it doesn't sound like it could get worse than watching your past self be physically torn apart by these nightmares, but it probably will. But what we do know from these nightmares is that these scenes of your childhood and stuff, they're not, they're not empty. Entities do exist here that are not a part of the delusions. These exist in the level always, no matter who comes here. They typically manifest themselves as beings that are off in the distance with weird glowing red eyes and just very barely visible bodies. These are spirits or demons of some sort, as it seems, and nothing is known about them, but they manifest in almost everybody's dreams and nightmares inside this level. They don't physically come up to you or anything, but they do look pretty creepy just kind of standing over there in the corner. Level 18.1 is also full of things like auditory hallucinations. They're very common as well, and you'll hear strange echoing and distortions all the time, especially when the nightmares begin to creep in. A strange community exists in this level. There really isn't a community, kind of. It's more of a place that might trick you to believe that you're not alone. It's known among wanderers as the Mysteria Land, and it pretty much takes the appearance of a place that you used to meet with your friends, like a playground, a gym, a pool house, a tree house, anything like that. This location will make itself known in the level, and it'll make you believe that you're with those friends again. But you won't know it, of course, because it's actually a trick, your friends aren't there. But the level is trying to convince you that you're back with your childhood friends at that place. So do not stay in that location for long, do not interact, whatever you see inside of it. It is not your friends, it is not your family, I repeat, it is not them at all. It is something dark, it is something mysterious, imitating them. To enter this level, you just have to travel too deeply into a memory from level 18 and never leave or escape it. This will trigger your launch into this nightmare, and then you have to go through what I just described. To exit, the level page says you'll hear a really disembodied voice calling to you from a far away, and this will lead you back home. And apparently, that text home is hyperlinked to level 200, which is a horrifying level in and of itself. So I'm not really sure how you would survive this level at all, or if you can. Maybe you should kind of get lucky, I don't know. But yeah, that was level 18.1. It's pretty much just a nightmare that creeps up on you for trying to stay too long in the memories of level 18. You know, level 18 is all about the happiness and the nostalgia and the liminality of your childhood, so I can see why you might want to stay there for too long. But if you do that, it'll eventually get corrupted and these awful things will start to happen to you. Your biggest fears, your phobias, these horrifying environments will form. You know, what's supposed to be nice and calm from your memories will just decay and you'll decay along with it if you don't get out in time. So this level is cataloged in sort of a narrative format, with a few paragraphs that describe it and its layout and all of its effects. So I'll be reading those paragraphs right now, and then later on after that, getting into the usual description and the yapping I do about the levels. You can use the timestamps below if you want to skip from part to part, or you can listen to both. It really doesn't matter to me, but I hope you listen to both, please. Okay, let's see what this level has to say. Level 200 is home. It was discovered on... Eh, there's no point in doing this here. It's always been around, even if you just arrived. Sit down, there's a lot to talk about. 
Description. Level 200 is the nicest little town you've ever come across. It's not too big, and it definitely does not stand out. There's people here. People just like you and me. About 4,000. You'll know them all eventually. Every single one of them. They're nice enough to overlook that smell of burning rust in your ears, or the faint sound of breaking of skin coming from the sky. You've been traveling, haven't you? We can tell. You look exhausted. Clothes torn, barely fed, skin still on. It's not easy exploring these parts, isn't it? Let's take a walk. Bases, outposts, and communities. Friends and family. There's old Joe V, still running that breakfast place, serving the same people day in and day out. Been doing it for 60 years. Remember going there before school, on those days, with a bleak blue sky and cold air that chapped your lips? You remember, right? The man poured his heart and soul into the food. It's his legacy, his flesh, his blood. He's been holding that soup bowl for 30 days. It's starting to fall apart. There's the school, with enough time, it could be your school, just the way you remembered it. Remember that year you went to space camp in the science lab and you met Sarah Palmer? Remember how she dared you to go into the basement alone and you did it because you were 10 and stupid and she was the first girl you ever noticed? Remember how dark and cold it was down there? Below, below, below. You remember. You were so happy to leave, to see home again. If you didn't know any better, you might have believed you were falling apart down there. I wonder what Sarah Palmer is doing with herself now. You can find out if you want. All you have to do is remember. Bring her with you. There's rot here. Ignore it. It only grows when you notice it. One more stop to make. It's a house. You can tell it used to be beautiful and untouched. Now the paint chips and its walls have grown too thin. It's not a place that's taken shape yet. You can make it better. Please remember how it used to look. How your mother would take you on walks around the neighborhood on summer afternoons. The pure and genuine joy that came with your birthday. How it felt to not think about living and dying or breaking into a million pieces. You remember. There was a time when all of this was true and you can help us bring it back. We're here for you. The rot only grows when you're not around. It grows in our homes, our businesses, our bodies. We're getting old. This town needs new blood. We're getting so old, it's getting hard to keep ourselves in one piece. Don't look too hard at Miss Garcia, or she'll fall in two. She'll bisect down the middle. Start building, molding. We're adaptable. We can be whatever you want. And we knew what you wanted from the second you set foot here. Keep that rot at bay. Just how you remember. Whatever you want all the time, you are in control here. All we need is for you to remember. Stay with us. Stay. Look behind you. Everyone's here. Entrances and exits. Why would you care about that? All right, well, that was the level as itself is described on the wiki. And to say the least, that was very interesting. Now I want to diagram it, kind of go over it, jump full MatPat mode into examining what all that stuff means, and without any more blabbering, let's do it. Let's start with the very beginning of the description. So the level takes place at some sort of town, a very small town that looks like any other one you might have seen. Allegedly around 4,000 people, quote unquote, live in this town. And I say people like that because I doubt they're real individuals. Your mind might be conjuring them up or they could be entities. And as a matter of fact, the town itself might not even be real. It might be just your mind playing tricks on you, but who knows? If the town is real, then there is an old breakfast store in that town, as well as other places like the school and houses and other restaurants and that sort of thing. None of that really stands out. It just seems to be a town that has weird people or entities that live there. What does stand out though are the weird and strange sentences between all that normal stuff. Like this one. There's people here. People like you and me. About 4,000. You'll know them all eventually, every single one of them. They're nice enough to overlook that smell of burning rust in your ears or the faint sound of skin breaking coming from the sky. Like what does that even mean? Well, uh, <laughs> that is horrific to listen to. Imagine the sky just sounds like skin ripping and tearing and somehow there's rust and rot in your ears. Again, it's unknown if this is real rust, real rot, or if it's just you decaying and being stuck in this town forever. There is an old school in this town, and there's a house, like I said, and this whole level is kind of stuck in a picture, as a, as a still frame, you could say. It seems fake, it seems uncanny, and rot seems to be consuming all of it. The fake image of it is corroding away as you speak. 
What we do know about this level is that getting trapped inside of it, no matter if it's in your brain or if it's actually real, will be your final destination. And the level will individually consume every part of you, whether it's you fading away, you rotting away, you literally being eaten. That's just what's gonna happen, you can't leave. There are no entrances or exits listed on this page either, so we don't really know how to avoid the level, or even how to survive it if you do find yourself stuck there. I can't tell you how to escape it because I don't know. Sorry. But all the information that I've read today and talked about and theorized is all we have. There's nothing else that we can guess on or deduce on. I think it speaks for itself, if I'm being honest, especially that last paragraph, which I'll read again. Start building, molding. We're adaptable. We can be whatever you want and we knew what you wanted from the second you set foot here. Keep that rot at bay. Just remember, whatever you want all the time, you're in control here. All we need for you to do is remember. So stay with us, stay. Look behind you, everyone's here. Nice. So yeah, that was the home level of the backrooms. A very, very classic level, very, very psychological thrilling level. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's level 200, it's very famous. I don't remember or think I've ever gone over it. Like, I don't think I've dedicated an entire video to it. So that's what this one was. Hopefully you did enjoy it. And even though I couldn't tell you how to avoid the level or how to survive it, I kind of could describe it that way. If you get sent, you'll know you're there just because you watched the video. Backrooms of 82 is the 83rd level in the catalog of lore, and it's been classified as a class 1 difficulty for it being decently safe and decently secure with a very high entity count. Although I would venture to say it should be a class 2 difficulty because of how dangerous it can actually be. The level's environment takes the appearance of a never-ending indoor market type area that has a very, very strict opening and closing schedule. The entire place is indoors. There's no sky access or anything, and there's no access at all to the outside. It's this giant indoor market. It's absolutely massive. There are multiple floors, multiple levels, and the ceiling is very tall. Speaking of the ceiling, there are these massive window panes that look out to the cloudy sky above. There's no visible sun, but light does shine through the windows, so it has to come from somewhere. The design of this level is sort of like an old Victorian market mixed with modern day mall type thing. It has modern amenities like light bulbs and electricity and that kind of thing, but it definitely feels older, like it's not from the modern day. Inside the market, there are shops that shoot off into different hallways and directions, and the majority of the shops here are very large. Some can be very packed and small the closer you get to the center of the level, but for the most part, it's pretty expansive. And this is the main part of the level, it's these markets. There are countless tightly packed together market booths and stalls here for you to explore. Inside the markets, you can find a variety of items, from different kinds of foods, to different kinds of waters and drinks, to clothing, anything you could think of. All of these markets and tents and everything can be explored and walked through as well, and you can actually barter and trade inside. Things like technology and baked goods and donuts and everything can be found. Your, your wildest desire. And like I said, the level is infinite, so you can just keep going forever and ever. Now, I'm sure you've been wondering, though, like, who actually controls the stores here? Who mans the stalls? Who does the checkouts and everything? Who stocks the shelves? Who works here? And that's actually a weird answer, because inexplicably and strangely, all the market stalls are run by entities. All of these entities are regular old backrooms creatures like smilers and hounds and bursters and dentists and animations, just to name a few. And typically the more aggressive entities actually run these stores. Although it does seem to be that they do have the level 11 effect that makes them more dull and less aggressive. These creatures still move around and have aggressive mannerisms and they look scary, but they don't outright attack people while serving them or while trading with them unless it's past closing time. Speaking of which, currency and trading in this level has very, very loose rules, and it typically goes by a case-by-case -case basis. Because currency doesn't really exist in the back rooms, there's no US dollar, there's no euro or anything, so people kind of just trade based off of equal things. But if you want to trade with an entity that works one of these shops, you'll have to walk around and find a tent or a market that you want something out of, go inside and bring an item from inside the market to the desk, tell the entity what you have to trade, and they will either confirm or deny the trade. And you can get whatever it is, or you won't. Things you could use to trade are items like royal rations, almond water, and things of that nature. The entities that do these trades are usually pretty relaxed and lenient, as they're under the level 11 effect, but this is only during the daytime hours. They're only calm and passive then. Although they don't like loitering or standing around inside their shop, so don't just take up space. 
And if you do want to end up trading something, make sure it's a swift transaction and never ever try to haggle or swindle the entities down on prices or, or try to get a better trade. Don't try to connive them or anything because they know, they know, they will attack if they find you doing it. There's actually a notice on this level's page that I'm about to read that specifically warns against haggling and swindling. Quote, under no circumstances should anyone attempt to swindle, con, or lowball the traders behind the stalls. Whilst acting in a predominantly docile and almost harmless state, the fact that these entities act under such parameters under their own free will has led to the discovery that these entities can switch off these behavioral differences if the individual they are trading with are attempting to scam or push a trade on the entity that they have deemed insufficient. Level 82's entities will kill any individual at a moment's notice and will promptly return back to their next station moments later, usually leaving behind the corpse of those they executed in front of the stall. So you've been warned, that's all I gotta say. So on a daily basis, level 82 goes through something called closing time. This is an event that happens every night. And that's what I mentioned at the beginning that kind of makes the level a little more dangerous than the class one difficulty it has. And you're not gonna wanna mess this up, so make sure you listen closely. During this closing stage, the vendors of the stores and the markets will close the businesses by shutting down the metal doors in front. You've all seen like the metal shutters that go down in front of the malls and stuff. That's what happens here. And the entities there will lock up and close up the shop for the night. All of this happens within a few minute period. All the lights in the doors will shut in under one minute and the darkness overhead will start to creep in. The lights will go out, the sun from above will stop shining and it'll be completely dark inside. This is what the closing time starts as and the second the doors start shutting, you need to find an exit to vacate the level instantly. Because after all the doors are shut and all the lights are off, all the vendor entities will go on a routine of removing patrons and starting to chase them towards exits. This is when they're starting to lose their cool and this period will last for about 30 minutes. And during that 30 minutes, you can get chased or eaten by a creature that wants you out because they consider you trespassing since it's past closing time. After that 30 minutes, it's about 9.30 local time and the stores and the markets here will not open again until the next day at approximately 7 a.m. local time. So during those closing hours, you should never be in here during those closing hours. If you're in here, you will probably get eaten by some weird creature. All entrances and all exits to the market are closed down during those times as well. So even if you were trapped in here, it's pretty much impossible to hide because all the entities are constantly chasing you around. Nice. So because of the aggression from the entities, there's no meg bases or, or outposts that can be established here. Since apparently people don't like being eaten by entities, it's not a good place to set up a base. But during the daytime, it is pretty safe. The entrances and exits to this level work very differently than the usual backrooms entrances, as these entrances are one way only. Usually in levels, you can kind of go wherever, but you have to go to these specific ones to get here. The main way to enter is by going to level 55 and going to an empty store aisle, and then no clipping through the aisle there, and you'll be sent here. And to exit, remember you have to do so before that closing time event starts, that way you don't get eaten, and you need to find one of the following ways to exit. The main one is by running around until you find a set of spinning and revolving doors at the quote unquote front of the building. And once you go outside those revolving doors, you'll be inside of level 159, the forgotten mall, and you'll turn around and the level you just came from won't be there. So you have to go in one way and you have to go out another way. Make sure you know where the entrances and exits are. That way you don't get trapped during the closing time. But yeah, that was level 82. It's a market that you can barter and trade things with and entities run it and you can only be there from seven to nine. And if you're not there from seven to nine, you might get, well, eaten. So, hope you liked it. So level 479 is the 480th level inside of the back rooms, and it's been given a classification of class 5 for it being unsafe, unsecure, and infested with creatures. More so just creature. The level itself is very, very enigmatic and very strange, and it's not really even like a usual level inside the back rooms. In fact, you can't even purposefully enter this level at all. It seems to exist outside of the boundaries of what we know to be the back rooms, which is saying something because the typical boundaries in the back rooms don't even exist. So this is outside of that already. Anyways, all entrances to this place have been accidental, thus getting an accurate description of its layout and its features and stuff is difficult to say the least. 
The level causes memory loss and communication issues to people who get sent and escape, so details that we do have are oftentimes filled in by their minds and imagination, which means they might not be fully accurate. But the general consensus of survivors that came from this level have said that at its most basic form, level 479 is a rusty, dirty, dark, and very humid building. Some say that the building is an old prison, some say it's an old abandoned hospital, some say it's a prison hospital, but all descriptions really emphasize and point out how old and in disrepair it is. It is completely dilapidated and is completely getting destroyed in most areas, and most of it is collapsing around you. There's no natural light sources either, which is a recipe for disaster for anyone that finds themselves trapped inside. This rusty old building is essentially a house of horrors though, as I'll explain later on down in this video. Encounters with level 479 typically last for one to two hours at max. That's that's it, which is good because any more than that, and I don't think we'd have any survivors that came out of the level. But it seems like the building and the level is just so unstable that it really cannot contain people in it for longer than that time period. Now, the reason the descriptions and the encounters of the level are so elusive is because uh, very few people have been sent here, period. And the state of their mental health and physical health when they come back pretty much makes it impossible to gather information. So now I want to get into information on why that might happen. What messes these people up? What causes them to be so mentally ruined, for lack of a better word? And I want to get into what might happen if someone finds themselves stuck in this level. It is estimated that 18 wanderers total find themselves stuck in a level each year, which is a pretty low amount, and that's pretty good, because most people that get stuck here don't make it, like I said, a bunch. But due to this level and its properties, survivors that exit it always end up with some sort of unfixable and irreversible brain damage. And that's where the level gets its name, me after the lobotomy. The damage is typically in the temporal lobe of the wanderer, which makes communication either hard or very impossible. It literally takes away their ability to talk and to express emotions. The internal danger is very, very serious, just by being in the level. And for the first five days after you exit, it can either be extremely mild or get worse as you go. Most cases though, after about a week of escaping the level, a survivor might just be in a fully vegetative state, unable to talk, unable to move, and unable to eat or sleep until they just fade away. That's in worst case scenarios though, there are actual people that have survived, but those are even rarer. Most people that make it out of the level aren't even hurt physically, just mentally and internally with their brain. And it's not psychological, it seems to be that their physical brain tissue is also messed up. But what actually happens to them? How do they end up with this brain damage? How are they unable to talk and think and stuff? Let me get into that right now. Viewer discretion is advised, by the way. This is disgusting, so don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, you, you have the brutally warning. Viewer discretion. Most survivors from this level mention something called Entity 479-1. These creatures are only described as the following. They are very vaguely humanoids with brownish and blackish auras around them and wide statures. The entities are very obscure and very unknown because it's so dark in this level and everything happens so fast, you can't even see what's going on really. Their motivations, or if they cause this mental damage to victims, is unknown. Although it's, it's assumed that these creatures are what causes that tissue damage and the brain damage. Until the year 2027, no actual photographic evidence existed of this entity, until an unnamed wanderer, who was found walking around a random level in the back rooms, seemingly dazed and just off, you could tell something was wrong with him. They had a picture of this entity on their phone. The wanderer was taken into care and was still slightly able to talk, and he gave this account of surviving the level and running away from this creature, and then he showed this image of the entity as proof of it. The wanderer's condition would then get worse and worse over that next week, and they eventually became non-verbal and then just decayed away over the next weeks until they didn't make it. The following symptoms have been observed in people who have survived the level and the entity 479-1. Impaired sensory processing, reduced talking ability, inability to focus, and short-term memory loss. All of these are very common traits of individuals who have experienced this level and interacted with this entity therein. Now, some people, like I said, do heal from the effects, and only about 12% of the people that get sent here eventually go into vegetative states or comatose states. 
So you have like an 82% chance. It is still unknown what this mysterious entity does to its victims or how it does it because it's, it would be really hard to inflict that sort of damage without like cutting open something. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's never physical injuries on the wanderers that leave. So it could be that the entity scares the people so bad that it just causes their brain to crack. Or maybe the entity does something where it goes in the wanderer's mouth or nose and that's how it gets to the brain. We don't know. It just seems to happen. Whatever it does, it makes the victims nonverbal, delusional, and sometimes vegetative. To enter the level, like I said, it's random, and no purposeful entrance has ever been found, and it's thought that you couldn't even go there if you wanted to. There's no warning signs or anything to look for, you'll just randomly get sent here after walking around one day. To exit, you have to be in there for an unspecified amount of time, and then you'll just randomly get sent back to the level you came from whenever the level decides. You have no choice, the level does it for you. If that happens, of course, you will never be the same again. Mentally, physically, none of it. This level constantly scares wanderers in the back rooms because they sit there and they never know if they're gonna be picked to get sent to it. No one knows what controls it, no one knows how they're chosen, but whoever gets sent here, it could be their end, you know? This old hospital, this strange enigmatic shadow creature, this decaying, humid, rusty, blood smelling atmosphere, it is really the stuff of nightmares and I would not want to get sent here. This level physically and mentally ruins normal people by essentially lobotomizing their brains without opening their head so that it has to go through their like their nose, their mouth or something. So if you have any theories on what the entity does to these people, let me know in the comments. I don't want to get into it because I don't want to get demonetized. But if you find yourself in this level, Godspeed to you. There's nothing I can help you with. Level 87 of the Backrooms is the 88th level in the Catalog of Lore, and it's been given a classification of a Class 1 difficulty, which means it is safe and secure with a small entity count. Now, the level and its content was discovered way back in the year of 2004 in the month of May and it has been described as the following. The level consists of hallway corridors that are miles and miles long, very similar to level 21. The hallways are plain and nondescript here, and even can be considered dingy to an extent, with harsh yellow lighting coming from the lights above. Alongside these cramped, liminal-esque hallways, there are locked doors on either side of the hallway that always seem to be barred or locked shut somehow but sometimes you might find a key to open the door on a nearby dresser or on the floor nearby. The hallways cross over each other and intersect and run into each other in weird spots as well. On your journey through these empty hallways, you might run across a table or a kind of a side table thing along the walls. These tables have been known to have snacks like chips and other vending machine style foods inside the drawers or on top of themselves, as well as you might run into some bottles of almond water. These dressers are where you could also find keys as well, and they're usually on top of the shelves or inside of a drawer here too. Oftentimes, these keys are either color-coded or named or numbered, that way you can find the correct door that they go to. Now, of course, all that sounds pretty normal. It's just hallways that look liminal. But the weirdest property that this level actually has, and the property that sets it apart from the other levels, is that time and spatial geometry is not linear here. Now, although it is uncommon, wanderers have reported seeing past or future versions of themselves for a few split seconds while walking around this level right before that version of themselves disappears. This can mean you see the childhood version of yourself just walking right down the hallway right past you, and they go into a room and shut that door behind them and, and you can't get in. Or you can see the future version of yourself sprinting past you. Oftentimes, wanderers report the scarier of the two is running into the future version of yourself because that version hasn't come to pass yet. It's kind of like seeing a ghost. Now, these apparitions, these versions of yourself, they are real flesh and blood entities and they are really walking around. Most times that you encounter them inside of the hallways, they will vanish very quickly or they will walk away very fast in order to not interact with them. But some people actually have managed to catch up to them and talk to these versions of themselves and they figured out some very interesting things about it. 
Oftentimes, these interactions are very emotionally charged, especially if you see the childhood version of yourself, because you see this innocent little version of you that hasn't seen the horrors of reality yet. Now, it is possible to give these versions of yourself, like, items and stuff that could help them survive, but doing this, you might run the risk of causing time paradoxes. The interesting way that this level kind of contains and solves these paradoxes is they create an infinite time loop of these past versions and the future versions of the level that kind of go out over and over again, which offsets the paradox that you yourself just made. And these are the loops that can cause the wanderers to have these strange interactions with their past self or their future self. Interacting, like I said, with these different versions could be very emotional, but it also could be very damaging to your mental health. It'll seem very, very uncanny talking to the spitting image of yourself, whether it's the past or the future, right in front of you. You won't be able to think about it. It doesn't seem real. It's also important to note that these anomalies do not always happen to people while they're exploring this level. You're not guaranteed to see the past version of yourself, but it is pretty common. And if the level chooses to show you this past or future self, it's almost as if the level has chosen you as an important person for some reason. But just a general rule of thumb is that if you see yourself, whether it's the past or the future, do not interact with that thing because you don't want to mess up the timeline more than it already is. We don't really know the effects that it has outside of this level and the ramifications that you might run into later on. We're also not sure if these things aren't just entities disguising themselves as humans. We do think they really are copies of you, but we're not sure. So just play it safe and do not interact with them. Anyways, back to the level part, the rooms that you can get into using those keys and the doors are accessible from the hallways. These rooms are really nothing to note. They're just plain bedroom style lodgings, kind of similar to hotel rooms or motel rooms, except they might be empty without any furniture here. This level is not described outright as a hotel or office complex, as there's no real defining features that would show exactly what it is. So it doesn't look like an office, doesn't look like a hotel. It just seems to be these arbitrary, randomly placed empty rooms and empty hallways. There's no rhyme or reason to any of it, yet there is rhyme and reason to all of it. The main thing you need to know while you're exploring level 87 is that you gotta be very careful when you interact with your past or future self. Like I said, we don't know if those versions are actually you, and they have been known to show aggression sometimes if you attack them. Some people have even claimed that these versions have tried to unalive the real version of you, and if that happened, well, the time paradox would be unfixable at that point. It's also unknown how this even happens, so. Ignore anything you see here, just walk straight, try to make it through the hallways, and try not to get lost. It seems like this level has some sort of time limit, or as if it's timing your stay here, and so it's imperative that you do not waste any time while being stuck here, because we don't have that much information about it, so the things I've told you today, it's literally all we have to work with. There's not a bunch of texts about it, there's not a bunch of reports about it, all that I just told you is all we got. So to enter the level, you can no clip through a door on level 21, and then you need to find the exit as fast as possible, because this level might kind of trap you in this time loop. To exit, you need to walk around, ignoring everything you can, until you find a random door that you can noclip through. Just try to noclip through any door you can see, and you'll eventually find one. But if you successfully do this, you'll be sent to level 119, and out of this hellscape of time loops and paradoxes, and seeing your past or future self. This is one of those backrooms levels that is so uncanny to even think about. These empty, nondescript, almost sanatorium-like hallways with nothing else but time paradoxes constantly happening where you're running into the past, future, or even current version of yourself. There's no known information on how the level does this or why it does this, but just as a general rule of thumb, like I've said 15 times in this video, do not interact with that person. That is not you, that is not a friend, it is something that's probably malevolent. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it at any time, please leave a like. And again, let me know if you like these long form videos. I hope you indeed did. Thank you for all your love support. Tell somebody you love them. Life is too short not to. Don't know why I'm talking like that. I appreciate y'all and I will see you in the next video. Bye.